Welcome to Scholars and Tools Online Superior YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about things like impulse, conservation of linear momentum, collision, coefficient of restitution. Make sure you stay with me till the end of this video so that you can understand better. Impulse is simply defined as the product of force and time, and it can also be defined as the time effects of force. It is a vector quantity. So impulse being the product of force and time is given as I, I for impulse, is given as F multiplied by T, the first multiplied by time, and this is equal to FT. So I is equal to FT as impulse. You should note this. If a function of force is given with time, with respect to time, then impulse is equal to the integration of force with respect to time. You should note this too. impulse is the integration of force with respect to time, the force function. And again, you should note that impulse defines how long a force acts on a body or an object. From Newton's second law, said force is equal to mass multiplied by change in velocity over time. So we can see Ft is equal to mass multiplied by the change in velocity, and impulse is equal to Ft. So I is equal to m. V minus u. It simply means impulse is equal to mass times change in velocity. And remember, momentum P is equal to mass times velocity, and then change in momentum is equal to change in mass times velocity. M is constant. So impulse is equal to change in momentum. You should note this too. If there's a graph of force against time, let's say you have a graph like this. And it is plotted. Impulse is the area covered by this graph, is the area under this graph. If the graph gives a triangle, then impulse is the area under this graph. So we have a triangle. So impulse is equal to area of triangle, and then um, impulse is equal to the area of a triangle is our base times height. The base in this case is the time, while the height in this case is the first. So one over two multiplied by first multiplied by time, and impulse is equal to half f c. You should note this. Moving on to the second part of the topic, conservation of linear momentum. We said earlier that momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Now, this momentum can be conserved when two bodies, when they collide with each other in a closed system. The law of conservation of linear momentum simply states that when two bodies collide in a closed system, the total momentum before collision is equal to the total momentum after collision. It means if you have a body A that collides with a body B, then their momentum before collision is equal to their momentum after collision. This is body A and body B. Let's say body A has a mass M1 and an initial velocity of v1 and body b has a mass m2 with an initial velocity of u2 since their momentum before collision is also equal to their momentum after collision then m1 retain m2 retain this will become v1 and v2 for body b now it means m1 multiplied by u1 
plus m2 multiplied by u2 is equal to m1 multiplied by v1 plus m2 multiplied by v2. It simply means the momentum of body A plus the momentum of body B before collision is equal to the momentum of body A plus the momentum of body B after collision. Remember, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. You can see P profile before is equal to P profile after. There are three cases of colliding bodies under conservation of linear momentum. Let's talk about the three cases. Case 1, if the second body is at rest, then U2 is equal to 0. It means you have M1, U1, plus M2. Now the second body is at rest. It is the first body that is colliding with the second body at rest. It is colliding with a stationary body. Then U2 is equal to 0. So this can be represented as zero. You can use this as a reference. M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. So in case one, U2, I mean, U2 is equal to zero. And so we have M1 V1 plus M2 V2. And this becomes m1 u1 m2 multiplied by 0 is 0 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. You should note this formula. This is the formula for case 1. Let's talk about case 2. It says if the two bodies stick together after collision and move with the same common velocity, then now. The two bodies that are colliding are now sticking together after they collide to move with the same velocity. Initially, we have M1, U1. They were having a separate initial velocity. Plus M2, U2. Equal to M1, V. Plus M2, V. The reason we are using V is because after collision, they have a common velocity and the common velocity is represented as V. So this becomes M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 plus M2. Factorize this then V. You can also say v is equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2 over m1 plus m2 you should notice this formula this formula if you are asked to find their common velocity then you use this formula remember m1 is the mass of uh, the first body u1 initial velocity of the first body m2 the mass of the second body u2 initial velocity of the second body let's talk about case three remember we have the objects a and b and they both have the masses for case three the second body is initially moving in opposite direction to the first body means this second body is no longer going in the direction of the first body Let's say the first body is going to the right, but the second body is now going to the left in opposite direction, and this one retains. The U2 will become negative. The U2 will become negative because it is going in opposite direction to U1. So we have, use this as our guide, we have M1 u1 plus m2 negative u2 is equal to m1 
v1 plus m2 v2 this becomes m1 u1 minus m2 u2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 you should notice this formula let's go to the next part of our topic today which is types of collision there are two types of collision which are elastic collision and inelastic collision in elastic collision momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved too it means the body a and the body b retains their momentum and their kinetic energy but for inelastic collision momentum is conserved but the kinetic energy is not conserved you should also note that kinetic energy is lost in inelastic collision and um, for perfectly inelastic collision the two bodies stick together after collision now let's talk about the kinetic energy in elastic collision we said in elastic collision the kinetic energy is conserved it simply means the kinetic energy the kinetic energy before collision is equal to the kinetic energy after collision kinetic energy is given as half mg squared of or half mg squared before collision the kinetic energy of body a would be half m1 u1 squared and of body b would be half m2 u2 squared and it is equal to the kinetic energy after collision this is half m1 v1 squared plus half m2 v2 squared this is for elastic collision their kinetic energy are equal but it is different for inelastic collision there is loss in kinetic energy in inelastic collision that is the kinetic energy before collision is not equal to the kinetic energy after collision here we would have a difference in kinetic energy or we could say a change in kinetic energy so the change in kinetic energy is given as change in kinetic energy is given as the kinetic energy before collision we could say the initial kinetic energy minus the kinetic energy after collision we could say the final kinetic energy you should note this formula the change in kinetic energy also the kinetic energy the initial kinetic energy is given as half m1 u1 squared plus half m2 u2 squared and the final kinetic energy is given as ke final to be half m1 v squared plus half m2 v squared remember for a perfectly inelastic collision the bodies stick together and they have a common velocity that's why we are using v not v1 and v2 and this is equal to half m1 plus m2 multiplied by v squared you should note this formula now let's go to the next part of our topic today which is coefficient of restitution coefficient of restitution simply talks about the ratio of the relative velocity after collision to the relative velocity before collision it is denoted by e e is equal to the relative velocity after collision v2 minus v1 over the relative velocity before collision u1 minus u2 coefficient of restitution e 
can be greater than zero or can be less than or equal to one if e is equal to one then it is perfectly elastic it means the velocity the relative velocity after collision is also the same as the relative velocity before collision so it means the upper part of this fraction would be the same as the lower part of this fraction and that would be equal to one if you enjoyed this video make sure you like and subscribe to scholar tutors online tutorial youtube channel thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video